Hi, it's Al Dayer coming to you from Mickey's Bait and Tackle. And today we're going to do a second streamer in the series of the three, the, uh, the rainbow trout version, Al's bow, I call it. Okay, last week we did the, uh, the brook trout, which was Al's brookie. And these are a variation of the Sam Slaymaker series of little trout fingerlings, his little brookie, his little brown, his little rainbow. And uh, the reason why we're kind of trying to just reinvent, well, you can't really reinvent that, that pattern. That is such a beautiful fly that he invented back in the 1950s, 60s. Um, the reason why we're doing it is because back then they didn't have the synthetics that we have today. We have an amazing amount of synthetics available to us, most of which is made from plastic. Your flash aboos, your crystal flash, your tinsels are all, uh, your dubbing, you see synthetic just across the board. It's incredible, uh, our, our palette of which we have to choose from in terms of materials. And that's what this is. This is kind of like the Slay Maker uh, uh, rainbow trout, little rainbow trout on steroids. So it's a simple fly, which I think a lot of tires will appreciate, because in, in many instances, less is definitely more. That's always the way it seems to be. The flies that are the least complicated seem to be able to produce the best. So we're going to tie this little bow by at least first getting my hook in the vise. And I'm using about a 5X long. This is a sprout hook, okay? And about a 5X long, that's about a size number six. We'll start the thread. I'm using about a six aught black thread. Get my thread started. Yeah, you gotta think about fishing these babies. Uh, a lot of people don't fish streamers. I don't know why. I guess I can include myself in that statement. But uh, this one will work most of the time. I'm using for the body, I'm using a pearlescent pink braid, diamond wrap. Okay, we'll get that established. Leave enough room behind the eye for your wing and your throat, other materials that we're going to attach. Get that braid in there. I could have used a white thread for the base, I suppose. But you want a little black to show through with a rainbow trout, don't you? I mean, it's got spots. We'll see how we're going to even improve on that here in a second. We'll wrap that diamond braid away from ourselves, forming a nice, neat body. Remember now, trout are cannibalistic. Okay, they will eat their young. And, um, this rainbow trout imitation is no exception to that rule, Mother Nature. And get that in there like that, and I'm going to leave just enough behind the eye to add my materials for my throat and my wing. We'll trim that excess off. Get rid of that. And I'm going to take a little black Sharpie, and I'm going to add some dots. Just three of them, okay, just to give the illusion of the speckles on a rainbow trout. The next material I'm going to add is the underwing. And in this case, I like using a white calf tail, okay? So I'm going to take a piece of that and tie your streamers sort of on the sparse side. You don't want to tie them too heavy. I like tying these in size 6, 8s, and 10s. We'll cut that calf tail, trim some of that fluff away from the base. You don't need that. It just adds more bulk than what you need. Measure, okay, and then trim again. Okay. And that's going to be our tie-in point right there. You'll see. nice thing about a rotary vise, it allows you to get right in there. Notice how when I shorten up on the thread, it gives me the control that I need. That's a basic axiom of fly tying, if there ever was one. You want always to be able to have that control whenever placing materials by shortening up on that thread. Okay. Now the next material that I'm going to add in is the throat. And in the bow pattern here that we're doing, I like a fluorescent pink. It's a beautiful throat for a, uh, a trout of this kind, of this rainbow variety. I'm going to strip some of that from the stem, just like that. Okay? And I'm going to try to even up the points of those barbules as best as I can. Right? Like that. Just need a little piece like that for that throat. And I'm going to trim the base of the barbules to make it nice and flush. 
And again, that's going to be my tie-in point. You'll see how this looks here in a sec. Get that in there. Just like that. Nice and even. It really contrasts really nicely with that white. See? Yeah, I like that. Now, the next material, real simple pattern here, not a lot of stuff going on, is going to be calf tail, but we're going to use like an olive color. This is kind of like a sculpin olive. It's a really dull olive. I like it for the back of the rainbow trout. We're going to take a piece of that. Again, not a lot, just enough to create the wing. Let's see, here we go. There we go, there's a nice section. Perfect. All right. Again, we'll just get rid of some of that fluff. We don't need all that fluff at the base. Pinch the ends. I like keeping the ends nice and natural. Gives it a nice natural tapered effect. We'll measure that. Okay, equally proportionate to the under white wing. I'm going to just cut a little bit off. Trim that nice and flush. And I'm going to tie that in. Just about like that. Okay, some streamer tires like to take a first initial wrap around the actual bunch to keep them uniform, just like that, and then bring it down. Sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it isn't. In this case, I don't feel it is. I don't know. I'll show you another trick. Um, get that in there, like that. Okay. And at this point, at this point in the development of this pattern, what I'd like to do is take some head cement. And I like this water-based stuff. There's no fumes associated with it. To fortify the wings, with the calf tail or especially squirrel tail. I'll just take a little drop of this water-based cement and just put, let it soak into the threads. The nice thing about the water-based stuff, most of it's very thin. It will soak right into those threads and fortify the base of that hair wing that we've just established, okay? These modern day non-alcohol varnishes or thinners are incredibly strong. Don't underestimate them. And they don't evaporate. They don't create a lot of fumes. Okay, the final product that we're going to put on this is a flashaboo. And I'm pretty sure this is the number 6923. It's uh, perfect for the rainbow trout. It has like greens and blues and golds associated with it. And in the last video we did for the brook trout, I told people, if you're using the flashaboo, instead of taking the whole stuff out of the package, just cut a slit right up at the top here of the package, and then stick the tip of your scissors in there and pull out just what you're going to need. It really makes it for a, a lot easier to use. And then you, you're going to cut just what you think you're going to need for this pattern, right about that. Okay. I'm going to tie that in the middle. It gives it the strength that I need somewhat. Measure that first tie it in. This is your topping. It really blends in nicely with the olive. Gives it that rainbow trout effect. And I'm going to bend that over just like that. And then continue to wrap. Okay. And we'll just form the head. And what really makes this pattern stand out are the eyes. And in this case, I'll just use some testers model cement. And I'll give it a white pupil with a black, or actually white, with a black. Trim some of those. For the rainbow, for some reason, white and black looks good on the rainbow trout pattern. Uh, for the brook trout, we use gold and black. And we're going to do a brown trout. That's going to be next. So you've got the brookie, the brown, and the rainbow. Okay. But yeah, it's the eyes that are really going to make this fly. So there you have it. Now you'll notice when the eyes are added, it really gives it the lifelike quality that you're looking for. Simple but effective. Very effective little fly or streamer. In Britain, they call them lures. Go figure that one. But to, hey, thanks again for being here. I'm Al with Mickey's Bait and Tackle, and we just tied Al's bow. So long for now.